Today, we are taking the time warp and going back to the planet Transsexual with three amazingly talented guests. And now is the time for all of you in our chat room to begin typing in your questions for them. Immediately after this, you have the opportunity to talk to them directly through our private chat options, as well as purchasing autographs and personalized video recordings, all of which are available now at galaxycon.com. So without further ado, let's bring them out. First, she is an actress whose credits include The Killing Fields, Great Expectations, and Rock Follies. Today, she's here to talk about her role of Columbia. Please welcome the lovely Nell Campbell. Well, hello, darling. Hello! It's so good to see you again. Marvelous to see you. Absolutely. How are things on your part of the world? Well, I'm in Sydney, Australia. It's 8 a.m. in the morning. It's cold and wet out there. And I shall be building a fire in my fireplace as soon as this is over. So that's for you to picture what things are like down here. Oh my, oh my. That, 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 is, that is a lovely comforting image, you sipping your tea in, uh, by the fire. Yeah. Thank you. With two cats. Sad. <laughs> very, very sad. Oh. Next, he is he is a Tony, a Golden Globe winning actor whose credits include the original stage cast of Grease, Fantastic Planet, Megaforce, and Spin City. Today, he is here to talk about playing the beleaguered Brad Majors. Please welcome our friend, Barry Boswick. Yeah, here's my tea right here. Zones. Hey, you know what? Whatever it takes, it's COVID time. You know? uh, if you knew the drugs I was on. Oh my God. Well, you had to wake up early. It's oh, normal. I, I'm in I Florida. To get to sleep to wake up early. It all went horribly wrong. Uh, what, what, well. what time is it? You're, you're in Florida, and what time is it, please? It's a normal time. It's 10 after 6. It's, it's the time that you do this kind of stuff. Cocktail hour. Okay. I'm so what, sorry. What, 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 Mary, what is your uh, COVID cocktail there? Uh, tequila. I it's, need always, that. it's always tequila. Yeah. With ice? And huh? nothing, it's just on the rocks, tequila on the rocks, right? Well, yeah, because I started earlier than five. So I had to sort of water it down a little bit. But now yeah. it's going to go straight, you know. We got yeah. a little time here. Yeah. How <laughs> lovely to see you, Nell. My oh, God, I haven't crazy. seen you. I know. Look at your house. I, what, what is all that behind you? Is that well, it's crazy. This is my office. And these, yep. these are cork boards where I'm, which I, I bought to start writing my book and putting things on it, like, you know, the, yeah. how things going to progress. Nothing has gone on it since I bought it. I was going to say, <laughs> how's that book coming, Nell? <laughs> that's, that's one photograph of me and my sister. That's it. <clears throat> you know, shocking. Anyway. Well, well let's see if uh, we'll bring in our next guest, and let's see if we'll give you some inspiration to put on that board. She is an actress whose credits include I, Claudius, Doctor Who, and Hawk the Slayer. Today, she joins us to talk about her role as Magenta. Please welcome the always entertaining Patricia Quinn. Hi, it's lovely to see you, but I'm afraid I haven't time to do this program because I have to go as magenta and build Nell's fire. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, actually, really, you should be building it while I'm doing the interview, but, you know, what, what can we say? <laughs> That'd be, uh, so if you catch a flight out of Heathrow, it'll take you, what, 17 hours to get to where Nell is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be ready tomorrow. You might gain a day if you cross the international date line. I, I have no idea how it works. No, no. I, I'm an alien, darling. I can get there in a minute. Oh, we know. <laughs> <laughs> You've all gone pink. Have you gone pink for everyone else? No, you've gone a little pink. Yeah. You mean that right? Nothing. My yes. whole screen's got the, all of, oh, there we go. There you are, yeah. And yeah. you're back. <laughs> uh, uh, I missed all three of you. We, we miss you on our stages at GalaxyCon, and we are looking forward to the world getting back to a little bit more normal and uh, having you on our stages back in front of your fans. So in the meantime, I though. I want to say that I looked at the news uh, five minutes ago to see that Australians are not allowed to leave the country for another three months. Mm. Oh, not allowed three years. Pardon? Nothing. 
<laughs> That's okay. I don't think Barry and I are allowed to leave Florida, so no, I, I sympathize. <laughs> no, we, can go, we can go anywhere in Florida. They don't seem to be too concerned about this here. Well, we're well, we're Florida. Yeah, we're as Florida. you discovered. Yeah, if you you can leave some places, but you have fourteen days. Um, to get back, oh, yeah, you're going to hibernation, yeah. quarantine, right? Quarantine, Is that quarantine? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hard, hard, uh, the hard quarantine, then really. Oh, my, yeah. Yeah. I've been in quarantine for three months and loving it. Mm. You and you and the kitties, huh? Yeah, <laughs> kitty time. Uh, for, <clears throat> oh, okay. So for our audience, uh, I, I'll, I've asked you this before, but uh, for those in our audience who haven't heard these stories yet, I would love to know where Rocky Horror began for each of you. Uh, Nell, why don't you start us off? It was great when it all began. <laughs> 1873. <laughs> I was working in a <laughs> working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. I was working as a soda jerk in a little cafe. And that is true. No, it's, you know, that's true. That's when it began for me, when I was working as that, you know, soda jerk. 1973. Well, I was joking. Um, that wasn't true. Anyway. Um, I was a suffragette. And Richard O'Brien, the writer, and... Richard Hartley, the musical director. It's all came, turned to shit. Can I tell you right now, it's all turned to <laughs> shit already. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nell. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of boring talking about it like this, but anyway. <laughs> they, they, they <laughs> hey, in, ignore like, them, Nell. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, Nell, keep. I'm, 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 dancer, a, a 1930s tap dancer, which was my look then. I had a sort of 1930s curly bob and tap shoes and a little outfit on and from the, from that period and anyway they told me to come over to their table and just and off and they said we're doing this musical you want to be in it so I threw down my apron and left with them the rest is history mm -hmm. they were never seen again <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Pat uh, how did this begin for you uh, seeing Nell Campbell with the p first person in London with pink hair, tap dancing in the street as a busker. <laughs> Fond memory, darling. Yeah, she was brilliant. Everyone Thank knew who she was. Anyway. I'll be back there yeah. soon. Well, Nell always said it started for her because she, um, I think to say, a bad word and um, made love to the director <laughs> but um i promise you i just auditioned and they and asked me to sing a rock and, and, song. and i i said to my agent what is this thing about and he said i think it's something about a circus hmm. and he wasn't wrong i've been in this circus ever since been amazing. <laughs> it what, certainly what, has been a ride. What song did you sing for your audition, Pat? Well, that's the hilarious thing. They wanted <laughs> a rock and roll song, and I wasn't quite a rock and roller. And um, so I went along and sang a 1930s Jesse Matthews song. Over my shoulder goes one girl. Like I'll tell you right there, you got the part. Right yeah, there. Because, you know, the reason, because they, I saw them looking at me as if I was off my head. <laughs> and then Richard O'Brien said, if I play this tune to you, do you think you might sing it along with me? Dun, 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 science fiction. So we sang this together somehow. And I went... This audition was in um, Sloan Square, and I went running down the King's Road in 73, and I thought, oh, my God, that song's amazing. And I was thrilled. 
and uh, half an hour later they rang and said we want you to be in it I oh. said to the agent I'm doing it and that was three weeks upstairs at the court at 18 pounds a week which wasn't fruitful for him he said but you haven't even seen the script yet I said I don't care about the script I want to sing that song yeah. and that was the part of the usherette and Pat, no, didn't we three weeks rehearsal, didn't we? And then six weeks of performing there? No. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. They extended it now. It was meant to be three, but we were so successful as Mick Jagger and Bianca with her white suit and cane and Elliot Gould were queuing up to get in. Mm. Uh, they extended it for another two weeks upstairs. Ooh. And then we moved down the King's Road. And the amazing thing was we kept turning um, cinemas into theatres. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The cinema being demolished down the King's Road, so we took that over. And then oh. you all then went on to the Asaldo Cinema. This was an extraordinary thing. It never went into bloody theatres. Really mm. mm. It did eventually, of course. But yeah. at the beginning... Imagine turning cinemas into theaters. It's exciting. Pull it back. Pull it back. Barry, where did, how did you join this uh, this remarkable thing? You can take your wig off now, Barry. <laughs> Let's get it straight here. Is it all right? Is it okay? Yeah, it's straight now. That's yeah, it. That's no, Diane always had a good head of hair. Hmm. Oh. He's still got it. He's I, still got his surfer hair. I think that's that's how why I got the part. The hair, yeah. the hair yeah. got me the part. Yeah. Uh, I I have no idea how I got this part. It was forty five years ago, and I can't remember dinner last night. <laughs> uh, and oh, so, yeah. I, I, think so I think they asked to look, look, look at your legs. Oh, uh, that's what it was. Well, wow. I, I don't remember. I don't think I ever auditioned, and I've been trying to find out in some book. There's so many books written I about this, yeah. and uh, and I, uh, I, I nobody explains how I got this part, other than the fact that ask Susan how she got the part. She, you probably went through the same. Well, I know how she got uh, it. I, I remember going. Susan and I went to meet them uh, at the theater in in uh, L.A. Mm -hmm. But I that's all I remember. Well, that, I think that's say? the question. The question is, how did it start? You're thinking, yeah. why, why yeah, what, did they uh, want to see you? But the question yeah. really is, what was your first part, you know? Yeah, yeah. what did you, what did you get the call? They were aware of, hey, do you want to come on in and read for uh, Rocky Horror? Yeah. Or, yeah. No, no, I would just went in and met them, uh, Susan yeah. and I together. And um, we knew the casting well, director pretty well. Who What's was them? them? Who was them? Uh, uh, I think. I, and yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. Yes, uh, they were That's so okay. nice. Yeah. I, I, don't know. I didn't know who the hell they were. <laughs> you know. Well, I know Susan, Tim Curry suggested Susan try out for the part. And she said, I can't oh. sing, Tim. She was a friend of Tim's. And oh said, really? Yes, we try for it. Hmm. So that it. But, but she where says that she came <laughs> from God knows. Hmm. <clears throat> well, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, uh, yeah. I, I think other people were up for this part at one point. Yeah. Uh, uh, who, who else, Patty? Who else was? Uh... Oh, I... I'm not you... called Patty. Mm, you have you have mentioned this before, and unfortunately, it'll. The man above you is called Patty. In the pit, that guy, right there, that guy. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's all right. <laughs> you know, this is a uh, mad coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's all the point. Maybe Stevens. I feel so bad for the fellow Stephen, right? Who was the original Brad? Uh, uh, right, a uh, Christopher. Uh, Christopher. Christopher. It was shocking. Yeah, yeah, I know he should have. He should have gotten the part, but he's he ended up. Yeah, didn't they? They offered him. 
said we had to have a couple of yanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I think I think you, I think that has been mentioned before. He sounded like a yank. He did. Yeah, he was Canadian. Oh, he was Canadian. He ended up having a whole career directing this all over the world, didn't he? Correct. Yeah. yeah, directing, producing. I was in it. He directed me 21 years later. Oh, very wow. Very awful. Mm. Oh. So you made the feature film. It got released to uh, a, a confused reaction, uh, say the least. And then it went away. When did you all individually become aware that it was developing its second life as the experience we know it to be now, with the midnight showings and and the, and the shadow casts, when did you when did you first start hearing about those? Well, the first uh, uh, Pat, you didn't come to this. Sue Blaine, Richard and O'Brien, Richard O'Brien, and I were invited by fans to go to Miami. Was that the first time, or was it with that lovely Italian boy that died when we went to New York? Which was the first one of those things? that we were invited to. You came to New York. My, my first one was the Eighth Street, um, you know, in Greenwich Village. Yeah. They had cinema. Um, was I at that one? Pardon? Was I at that one? Yes, of course. Because I thought it was Roseland. Was that further, was that before Roseland or after? I don't know anything about Miami. I mean, my first time for America was because of Sal Piero. Yeah. Who became the amazing, um, you know, thanks to him, he became. Conductor. He conducted the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. And then they invited us. And yeah. It was <clears throat> the most wonderful time because. Uh, one couldn't believe it because one has never seen anything like what was happening. That's Everyone true. dressed up as us. <laughs> Wonderful. It's I, so entertaining and, uh, <clears throat> oh, God, the atmosphere. And uh, recently I we did the Royal Albert Hall, Nell and I, to um, celebrate the 40th and um, 45th anniversary. Um, you know, so it was extraordinary that 45 ye years later, we're at the Royal Albert Hall and it's sold out for two nights and uh, just showing the film and at the Royal Albert Hall, that was extraordinary because the film was on such a massive screen. So yeah, that mm -hmm. size. And that's where the word shadow cast came from. Oh. Because when they first shadowed, they didn't do what they do now and reenact the whole film and bring props on the stage. They actually reenacted it and only the shadows were on the screen. Oh. And it was actually brilliant. You know, okay. so it, it, it yeah. wasn't um, like it is. Do, do you mean they were behind the screen? Or you could just you just could see their shadow. Fifteenth the anniversary, where we celebrated in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember that well. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I did. The cast, the cast uh, came on, and uh, it was stunning. There were so many of them, and um, a large screen. So. Standing in front of that, only shadows hit the screen. Yeah, and for me, that was that was actually better, you know. But anyway, yeah, shadow I, puppets. Very well, they had, they had to be so precise. I mean, and and th in those days, uh, as a shadow caster, I mean, you really had to have every gesture down. It and was astonishing. Like they're sitting, yeah. Nell and me, in our bedroom scene, for example, and every finger hand gesture every yeah perfection. brilliant brilliant yeah yeah well, what, to me what was so interesting about it was back then 
the only way they could learn it was to actually go to the theater and see yeah. it on screen. Then there was no taping, there was no nothing, yeah. there was no film. Oh, yeah. And so they were so dedicated. I mean, there wasn't any social media, so you couldn't get any, uh, even the shout outs. I mean, even the lines, yeah. you know, yeah. it, yeah. it, it, it was, uh, it was so uh, uh, local you know, to uh, wherever it was being put on. And, yeah, but uh, the most amazing thing at the 45th anniversary at the Royal Albert Hall, uh, number one, it's the biggest cult film in the world. Number two, it's one of the top five grossing films in the world, and that's why I'm so wealthy. And um, number three is... <laughs> the most exciting thing ever for me. It's the only film ever made never to leave the cinema. And someone said, what about Gone with the Wind? And I said, it went. <laughs> that, 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 is, that is true. It is, it, is, it is somewhere on some screen in somewhere in the part of the world. Right. Maybe, maybe not right now, but no movie no, no. at the moment. No, it, it is somewhere right now. They're doing it like this. Yeah, indeed. But it, yeah, you, uh, Barry, you raised a good point. I, I hadn't really considered that. That yeah, somebody had to be going in with notepads, watching the film, buying a ticket, going in, oh, taking I notes, go, get, seeing a next screening, going back and doing it over and over and over again to get that right. That I, is, I couldn't do it. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, no, that's I, why that's why Pat's so rich because they kept on going back and back <laughs> and back, right? I mean, right? they were so wealthy. <laughs> and the point is, I mean, the film was made for tuppence because Jim Sharman would only use the cast from the play. I mean, mm. Bowie Jagger wanted to play Frank. He wouldn't have <clears> any, <throat> and he'd have. Thank God, Nell and myself, and only us from the play, and therefore his um, uh, the money for it was a, a pittance. So we made that film for three hundred quid a week in like uh, was it six weeks? Yeah, I think it was five. Right. All right, and. I mean, uh, so, it, it, was, it was hurry, hurry, scurry, scurry, get your lines right. We're not doing another take. Yeah. Well, of <laughs> course, but the point was the why it worked, I always know, is because we actually had done the play. So we had it locked already. Yeah. We knew what we were doing. And then these two Americans came in, and we were quite nice to them. Oh, oh, you were not. You didn't talk to me at all, for Christ's sake. I don't remember you ever having one word with me. Maybe Nell. I think I have a picture of Nell looking me up and down. Uh, I, you know, and I think, uh, you know, looking at my I hair. For, I think that's a still from the show, and I'm about to take your clothes off. I haven't seen that. Yes, well, you were both undressing me, not only <laughs> on the film, but yeah. behind the I know, scenes. I know, I know. No, I really we like had that. no time to talk. I know you didn't. <laughs> and yeah, speaking of... People made out, I didn't invite them to my house. I mean, I was a married woman with a baby, and it was l lucky enough I could get to make the film, never mind invite people home, because the schedule was so tight. Yeah. You know? yeah. So we um, worked... Most right. films are. That's one so party, I remember there was one party at Richard's in the beginning. Was it somebody's birthday party? Uh, uh, yeah, I thought that it was at Tim Curry's place, but I wasn't that. Oh. Ooh, I wow. don't remember that. Yeah, I've seen pictures. <laughs> I've, I've seen pictures. You're in Perry Bedden's book in all the pictures. I've seen pictures of it. I know I was there. Yeah. You were there. You were. There's a lie. We'll take your word for it. Uh, tell you, we've got enough questions from our audience in the chat room, so I'm going to ask Jude, our producer, to throw the first one at us. And this comes from Sir Daltrey, and the question is, what was the most challenging aspect of the film? Uh, Patricia, why don't you start us off? Oh, Lord. <laughs> I can't believe Roger Daltrey wants to know, but, I mean, you know, <laughs> let's tell him anyway. Is it Roger Daltrey? Yeah. 
The doll prick. Oh, I know him. him. I, yeah, I was in a film with him. The Ken Russell film. Yes. Yeah. Which what, call me. Mr. Mania. I was in bed with Roger Daltrey in Mr. Mania. He had the body I'm of love. I was in bed again now. Yeah, and then and, mm -hmm. and Ringo Starr burst in on us dressed as the Pope. He was playing the Pope. Uh, uh, sounds like a standard Ken Russell that's movie. Fascinating, doesn't it? Um, so, challenging. Uh, it was working with uh, Barry, wasn't it? That was oh. the most challenging. Oh, yeah. Well, was that be? Challenge. We were like, how are we going to get this drongo to lighten up? Oh, God, I tell you. I think it was the drive from London to Windsor every day at five in the morning or six in oh, the morning. I think that's ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's two minutes down the road, Ray Studios, Hammer Studios. And uh, Susan Sarand and you, all you do is complain about that. Ridiculous. That's interesting. <laughs> do they? Does she complain about that too? I've yeah. never complained about that. I'm just yeah, trying to. I'm just. I'm just trying to. Go for drive me. I'm just. I'm just. Oh my God! What? Children, what? what? Children, 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 one at a time, please. Right. What about what the about? Thing was that the the budget was so low. That they made out to Nell and Pat that we'd have to t get a bus at Marble Arch to go <sighs> to the studios at uh, five in the morning. Yeah, you complain about that now. Would you and and now it was wonderful. Um, Lou Adler, we went to a lunch and L Nell said it was brilliant. She said, uh, No car, no fill. Did Thank you, you darling. <laughs> what? I so remember that lunch. Yeah, and you said that. And and <clears throat> then we shared Mr. Boswick's car. I went with Susan. <clears throat> and Susan and Tim Curry. Oh, I, I went, went with Susan's uh, car. But could, do you love it, Patty? We didn't get our own car. So Susan kindly had, had me in her car every day. Mm-hmm. No, really? I wasn't yeah. with Susan? No, you weren't. No, oh. I was with uh, um, Tim Curry and Richard and Pat. I was with Meatloaf. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the first time I did cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> On the way. Six yeah, five, six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that makes sense. Wait, oh, yeah. Wait. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wait, uh, but it, it's six o'clock in there. It was it was six o'clock our time? Yeah, yeah. I never did it again after that. <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible job. Anyone watching? I did you not like it? Time? No, I didn't. What like time? It. Did you not like it? Waste of time. No, no. That's like waste of time, waste of money. And listen yeah. to me. Listen to me clear. It makes you think you're more interesting than you usually are. Oh, and I I'm going to tell you, wrong. you have never been more boring than when you're on cocaine. Okay? Yeah. Let me save you that enormous amount of money and humiliation. Yeah, Next question. Right. Words of wisdom indeed. Sir Daltrey, thank you for taking us down that rabbit hole. Hi, Robert. It was great <laughs> to hear from you again after all these years. <laughs> and uh, Jude, what's next? This one comes from Robin. What was your favorite outfit or costume that your character wore on the set? No, why don't you start us on that one? Well, so many, okay. Well, of course, I adored my sequins, adored my sequins. Not that comfortable, but adored them. Mm -hmm. And I love a sequin to this day. I love anything sparkly, as Darling Pat knows, like her bracelets that she's wearing right now. Give us a twinkle. And um, But I also, I must say, I was mad about the corsets that we wore in the famous, what do you call what do they call it? The scene when we're all dancing? The floor show. The floor show. Yeah. Floor show. yeah. I've never understood why that's called the floor show. 
Uh, anyway, so, you know, love the sequins, love the that's floor. That's a floor show. That's what the, an act like that is. It's a floor show. Yeah. It's a okay. funny term. Sorry. Sorry. I also, my gym jams, my pajamas, which happened to have a slit that I was unaware of when I went, ah, and my nipple came out. Don't mm -hmm. let, don't let oh, that. You. Oh, I, I never, never noticed that. Really? Oh, my God. God. And they were always bruised. Every scene you were in, you popped that old nip out. <laughs> oh, God. Look at him now. Yeah, great. <laughs> Uh, all right, Barry. My uh, favorite costume was oh, my okay. um, uh, dinner dress, oh. and it was a piece of chiffon, and it was cut on the cross on the diagonal. And Sue Blaine said they had this one piece of chiffon, and the boy cut it. And she, Sue Blaine, the um, costume oh, designer. And she said she turned her face to the wall because she couldn't watch him cut it. Because if he got it wrong, they couldn't afford another piece of chiffon. Mm. Well, he cut it, and God, it was fantastic. It, it just was so amazing. amazing. Was Pat, tell us how much the uh, budget was for the costumes on the movie. I don't know that. It was something. I think it was like one thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah, it was like three. It was. Three or four. Yeah, it was like three, or maybe what? Three. Three hundred quid. One thousand five hundred pounds, which was like three thousand dollars. It yeah. was like hilarious. It was all I mean, that's why they only could afford one piece of chiffon. Mm. And that's why I was wearing my pajamas. I rest my case. <laughs> uh, Barry, how about you? So I had to bring my own high heels. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't afford them, you know. And that's why I got the job, because I had high heels. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Mystery salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, those damn high heels were, and uh, it, when we got out of that pool, yeah. and it was wet and cold, and then we had to do that dance in wet shoes on a wet stage, you wouldn't do, you wouldn't do it now. They there would have been uh, there would have been stunt people and they would have been people saying you can't do that. Somebody's going to get was, hurt or break an ankle. It was worth it. Oh yes, it, it was. was. The core, the core. You had to really use your core to stay balanced. That's right. That's right. I mean, yeah. for me, that was obviously used to wearing high heels. It was a nightmare. Let alone, I don't know how you you probably never wore high heels in your life. Except, you know, at night with your Yeah, wife. my buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they found high heels that size. I think it's some hooker place, right, oh, in I London? Do. It's there's transvestite hmm. shops in London and Islington, you know, ah. and with um, six-inch heels, but, like, the size 12 feet. And, yeah. Hey, that hey, makes hey, sense. Hey, Mm. That makes sense. That makes sense. Robin, thank you. That was a good one. What do we have next? From mm. Kelly. What was the funniest behind-the-scenes moment you all experienced? I didn't have one laugh in this whole goddamn thing. <laughs> it was just miserable. The whole damn thing was miserable. There was nothing funny about it. Found him so funny. The drongo. Oh my god. The, the angry American. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't think of you as angry. No, oh. I'm not angry. I'm no. just bitter. <laughs> Pat, darling, can you think of anything? I mean, you know, what was the fun there? What can we say? Yeah. It wasn't funny, but the stunt guy doing the uh, motorbike mm -hmm. in the laboratory pretending to be meatloaf, he fell off the goddamn. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. He fell off. That wasn't funny, but that's no. just a little fun to share yeah. with you. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, something was funny. Um, it's when I announced dinner is prepared. Um, the, the, the designer had forgotten to leave an entrance for me to come through with my gong and do that. There was no door. So he just cut a hole in the wall. So come through the hole in the wall. <laughs> well, that, that was the same hole that the uh, wheelchair came through, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'll, right. I'll, I'll give you credit for it. It had nothing I to remember, do with it. I remember, too, watching when, they, when, when Dr. Scott came through his wall. Remember them doing that bit? Yeah. Because he had to go blasting through that wall. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. But that yeah. is very, Pat, that was so, also your delivery of that line. Dana is prepared! Mm -hmm. I did that in a Catherine Hepburn voice. Could you do it for us now? Transylvanian. Could you do that for us now? Do it now. <laughs> Dinner is papaya. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a reminder to our audience, if you'd like to chat with our panelists like I am now, purchase an autograph or get a personalized recorded message, please sign up at galaxycon.com. And we'll, I'll thank you, Kelly, for that question. And let's do another one from Desiree. Do you think this film could be made the same way today, uh, content wise? No, they tried it and uh, with a Fox thing, and it was, it was not very good. It, uh, because they had to lighten it up and brighten it up and, and, uh, Politically correct. Make, they make do any of those things. And the thing that I could not believe, considering Lou Adler did it, and he is in records and the music, they, the music was bad in that TV. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was yeah. dull. It's not about um, the acting and the whatever, which was, <clears throat> I'm not putting it down, I'm just saying it was a disaster, okay? <laughs> Well, I think if they try to do it for real, uh, I mean, th they'll never do the simplicity of it. I mean, it was yeah. like it was like a six-piece band, like it was like on stage, right? Those yeah. guys were on stage, yeah. and it was the rawness of that, the punkiness of that. I think yeah. that that if anybody like they did with Fox, but if anybody tried to do it now, they'd so overbuild the soundtrack. Yeah, uh, and it would lose its urgency. It would lose. Yeah, its, it was uh, really dull. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he could get the music wrong for the television thing. Astonished me. It was yeah. just dull. Yeah. It'd well, be, be. I think they put they put too much money into it. Too big of a budget, and and this thing, what for what it was, it, it was it was the stars were right. It was lightning in a bottle. This. Rocky Hole really only works the way you guys did it. <laughs> you know, it works as the shadow cast and everything on else, but as a film and as something, I, I think it's only, only yeah. Works. But I, I think the question it was more about the the social themes, the sexual the, themes of yeah. it. You know, and I I think she's wondering whether or not that's still applicable in today's you know in today's world and yeah, whether or not. Is it not politically incorrect? Yeah, I think what, that's what she was getting at, right? Uh, uh, it could have been. I, I, yeah. I, she just had to, I, I think the question means that in the, in the climate now, would it be okay? I mean, I think it's politically correct totally, the film. And no doubt yeah. it would be found politically incorrect by the extremely conservative world that we live in now. I, but when, we, when we did it on stage, we were... It was called <clears throat> Fun, and it was being written daily. There was hardly any script. So we were all there while the script was being written, new lines, new things. And when Janet was given the song, um, Touch a Touch, Touch Me, I Want to Be Dirty, Julie Covington said, that's disgusting. I'm not singing that, you know, which was a bit shocking. And um, it was just um, extraordinary in that it was just coming in overnight. It was going on. So we were doing something called sex, drugs, and rock and roll. 
we weren't there to change lives we weren't there to enhance anyone's sexuality we weren't you but then all of that came out of it which was amazing mm -hmm. and very positive yes. but on stage that's what we were sex drugs and rock and roll and that Bowie was uh, that it's Bowie's time and it was our time and Bowie's makeup artist um, Pierre Laroche French makeup artist uh, did our makeup mm -hmm. You know, he did the zigzag Bowie, you know. And I thought, oh, my God, he can make me look amazing. He's amazing. So <clears throat> he took one look at my face, and I thought he'll give me cheekbones and things. And he looked at me and he said, eyes and mouth. <laughs> that was it. So he gave me two pairs of eyelashes <laughs> up, one down, and... But it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Desiree, we hope we were able to give you that clarification you were looking for. Hope that worked. Uh, let's see what's next from Robin. What it was? What is your favorite part about audience participation? Is there any iconic? Are there any of the iconic lines or responses or props that you see in use at audience participation that you enjoy? I, my favorite, my favorite part is when the audience strips down to their underwear and they run around the theater. Have you seen that now? I don't know no. if they do that. Oh, yeah, here in the United States, and, and uh, they, I forget what's it called, Patty. At that point, and you don't know, you've never seen I, this, have you? Uh, well, uh, the line, yeah, we 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 uh, we do it at Galaxy Cat all the time. I don't think yeah, we yeah. we we haven't stripped all the way down to it. I think. Uh, uh, well, I mean, no, they go down to their underwear. And, yeah. and and the last time I saw this, there must have been 40 people or 50 people from the audience who stood up, took their clothes off, and did like a conga line throughout the whole theater. And um, That's wonderful. Isn't that great? <laughs> I, I went to a friend of mine took me to see it in, um, in somewhere in London in a really big big cinema which used to be a theater it was an opera house beautiful opera house but uh -huh. it's just now a cinema and we had a box and it was so i i thought it was stunning truly i thought it was a, an amazing evening you know the whole thing fantastic Underwear, the entire audience running around underwear. Yeah, nice too. Now, <laughs> any uh, any memorable things from when uh, from parts that you've seen from the recreations of Shadowcast? What, what's that line that we all like, Brad? Made uh, uh, what asshole? No, <laughs> that's not that's not <laughs> what's, that. the, what's the line yeah. that we used to like that I can't remember it sadly. That one of those in the repartee of like throwing lines at, at the screen. Take the risk. Oh, I, there's so many great yeah. ones. And there's so many shitty ones, too. Well, I mean, they, I, yeah. they do way too many now. They talk, it used to be intermittent, and now they talk the entire way through the film, which yeah. and they're not nearly as witty what they say. No, no. Yeah, l l l l I agree. I've seen different versions, and I think less is definitely more. That's yeah. right. So anyone out there do, doing their own shadow cast, I hope you are taking notes. Robin, thank you for that. Let's, Jude, let's do another one. From Aaron. <laughs> did any of you keep anything from the set? He did. Mm, I did? No, what did I keep? Did. Yeah, what did I keep? You took something from the old the the, the old mansion, didn't a door novel you took the shower. Oh, oh, yeah. I took a shower. I, I went up to the third oh, floor right. and... And I took a, one of those big shower heads. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. A shower head? Yeah, it was a big, uh, uh, what do you call them? I don't know. It was some huge yeah. old shower head. Oh, those big, right. big, real fancy ones. And where yeah. is it? Yeah. What's that? Oh, where? I put it in a house I was building, and then I sold the house like an idiot. And so now they have this huge uh, shower head, but they don't know what it is. They don't know the, the history of it. And... Uh, Oh. It's a shame. I wish I still had it. 
I just lost a light over here, and I actually look better with only one light. <laughs> Lose the light. More Chinese. Uh, this is good. Uh, this is good. I like this. Okay. Uh, ladies, did you uh, do you take any uh, any mementos from the set? I didn't. No. We couldn't. You know, we're not. A, we weren't allowed to take anything. We we couldn't. They they lost everything. I didn't want to take anything. It's never. I can't believe I didn't take my sequin top hat. Can't believe mm. I didn't. That would have been that would have been a treasure, certainly. Aaron, thank you. We have time for one more, so I'll ask our producers to pull out a really good one for us. Coming from Faye. Oh my! How would you explain Rocky Horror to other people? I mean, who is other? You mean non-gay people? What? I don't understand. No, no, just to other people. Maybe just somebody who just has never seen. And weirdly enough, I, I can sympathize with this question because. As a kid growing up, I always heard about Rocky Horror, and it was this thing at midnight. And when I would ask somebody, "What is it?" they're like, "It's a movie." And it's a circus. Pat covered that earlier. <laughs> it's a rock and roll show, basically. It yeah. Right. yeah. What, what did you just What did you just say? It's I a, said it's a circus. Yes. You covered that yeah. earlier. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that. That you just said. What do you say to people? It is. Yeah, well, how would you explain Rocky Horror to people who have just have no exposure to it whatsoever? You can't. <laughs> I, 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 I think I would say it's a, um, a rock and roll musical which, exactly. cover, which covers every kind of sexuality. There's, you know, straight, bi, cross-dressing, trans... Everyone's included. Oh, it's so wicked. <laughs> and no, and pretty much no one gets their feelings hurt. I would say that it's a movie about the loss of innocence. <laughs> and every, no, really, everybody, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Everybody in this movie loses their innocence. At, yes, at they do. One point or another, you know, they, there is a life changing moment or uh, <laughs> some kind of journey. You know, um, uh, and um, uh, that's all I have to say. <laughs> no, that, well, when well, aliens you, arrive, you got to be careful. You know, yeah, your 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 character certainly did. Oh my goodness, GalaxyCon viewers, this has been the cast of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and that was my time. But it does not have to be yours. If you'd like to chat with our panelists, purchase an autograph, get a personalized recorded message, please. Head over to galaxycon.com, and while you're there, be sure to check up our schedule of upcoming events like this one. Uh, panelists, any final words for our audience before we go? Thank I you for great. tuning in, man. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> no, no, I was saying now's the time to do a one on one with me because I look fabulous. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, ladies, gentlemen, as always, this now, been... now, hold, wait, now, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was going to say thanks for every anyone, anyone, and everyone that's been watching. Thank you so much. Remember, uh, I'm in Australia. She's down, and she's in London. He's yep. in Miami, and you, I don't even know where you are, Patty. Oh, Florida. I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down the road from Barry. I said yeah. two Florida, one Australia, <laughs> and one London. So one Sydney, Australia. So right. thanks yeah. everyone that's managed to encapsulate our fabulous show. And I just say, just that they've kept the dream alive for forty-five years, and I think we've got another forty-five years to go if this kind that's of enthusiasm will, 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 you know, still fill the world. Uh, we love it, and we we're so happy that you love it still. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, we look forward to hosting you back on our stages live and in person and getting you back in front of your fans. To our audience, thank you as well. Thank you for those great questions you all sent in. We hope to see you tomorrow where we'll be joined by the cast of Star Trek Enterprise and Charles Martinet, the voice of Nintendo's Mario and Luigi. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care and keep washing those hands.